Welcome to Ruckus Avenue Radio on the show that's called Built, where I get to interview some of the most unique entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs whom I like to call unicorns, uh, entrepreneurs that are so successful they don't even have time to make a digital footprint. Um, You won't find them online. You barely find them on Google. Um, I really do admire that actually about a a lot of entrepreneurs that are that have that ability to um, not have such a crazy digital footprint like a lot of entrepreneurs feel the need to these days. Mm -hmm. Um, And you, for example, were able to do that, stay behind the scenes and build this phenomenal company. So with me today, I am sitting here with Kim Tierra of Acetronic and um, we are in Ontario in Mississauga, Mississauga, right? Yeah, Mississauga. Mississauga, Ontario. And um, there's been no questions that have been sent, no questions or answers that have been rehearsed. Um, (laughs) We're in for storytelling time. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it, (laughs) I think. (laughs) We've got wine in front of us. We've got some liquid courage going. So as I do with all of my guests, I like to, uh, I like to get to know exactly, you know, where you were born and raised um and it also lets us our audience know as well you know set the set the tone for us okay so um born and raised uh in england immigrated to canada in 1974 um family of five had two other siblings so there was um, me my brother and my sister when we came over my uh, dad uh, used to work with british airways in england and uh, when he came over, he was offered a job with CP Air. Um, CP Air was stood for CP Air was a, a an airline back in the seventies. Wow, here you know, in Canada, here in Canada. Well, and what did it stand for? I believe it was Canadian Pacific, maybe. Oh, Honestly, incredible! I, I had don't no know. idea. CP Air, yeah, that's who had offered him a job when he came over from from England. And your dad was born in in, in England as well. No, my dad was born in India. Okay, and he immigrated to England in 1963, I believe. Did you like it in Canada when you first moved here? Uh, for a few weeks, right, and then winter came. <laughs> Oh no. no! And then you're yeah. and you're like, send me back to the UK. Yeah, because yeah. he brought us over um, to see if we liked Canada. He brought us over in the summer, right? Um, so the C and E was happening. We had Ontario Place, and we had Centre Island, and, and beautiful summers, which you don't get in England. And as a kid, you we were probably loved like, it, and we were like, yes, yes, we want to move to Canada, right? And um, so then we came in August, and winters were very bad. They're not like they are right now. Uh huh. Um, they started early and there was a lot of snow. So um, the winter started early? Yeah. Back then? Back then. W- like and when? a lot of snow. October, late October. Really? Yeah. I had no clue. Yeah. So you know those stories about I had to walk to school yeah, in yeah. knee high deep <laughs> snow? That was literally what I had to do. Wow. Yeah. So you guys moved here and did you guys moved to where? So Mississauga? Uh, Oakville, where? Bramley, really. Bramley, Bramley okay. Bramley, which was a small um, little town uh, which amal- has amalgamated since with Brampton. Yeah, no. Yeah. That's so we incredible. were one of three Indian families, if you can believe it. Back wow. Then. Yeah. I think for everyone listening to this that is <laughs> from around there is kind of... No way. Yeah, exactly. What? Yeah. Three families? Yep. Oh, that's Three incredible. Three families. Wow. Bramley, yeah. And this is 1974? This is 1974. Incredible. Yeah. So your dad gets a job here and then what? Visible minority. Mm-hmm. Um, very early 70s, mid 70s. Um, there's a lot of discrimination. Mm-hmm. Um, My parents went through that. So he had a job. Um, then there was a, a, a semi-recession in the early 80s. He lost his job. He couldn't find another job. In the 80s? In the 80s. He wasn't able to find a, another job. He was told he was overqualified. Overqualified, overqualified quote unquote. Unquote. Yeah. Right. So I, I saw some pictures of uh, of you and your your beautiful family, um, which we'll get to in a second. But your dad uh, w- was wearing a turban in some of the in the pictures. Right. So when he, you guys first came here in the seventies, was he wearing a turban? Uh, no, he wasn't wearing a turban when he immigrated over. From right. England. He was because uh, he the, had cut hair because he was afraid of the discrimination. Well, he had cut his hair when he immigrated from India ah, to England. Right. Okay. He wanted to become like a proper Englishman, and you know. Yep. So, but when he came to Canada, he went through a. Um, 
an experience that caused him to to embrace his faith again. Yeah. So he, you know, he embraced Sikhism. I know so many people like yeah, that. Yeah, he embraced Sikhism and, um, you know, um, Amrat Shaklia. Yeah. And so he, um, you know, grew his hair, mm -hmm. wore a turban. And so he was, a, he was a visible minority to begin with. And then that even further showed him as a visible minority. So, you know, it was very difficult for him to find a job. Mm -hmm. So my mother said, you know, why don't you, you know, do what you were doing for, for British Airways and repair instruments? Instruments? Instruments. Like instruments. musical instruments? No, uh, electronic instruments. Ah, okay. So he was an instrument technician. So this is the 80s now? This and is the how 80s. old are you? I'm, oh my goodness, really? <laughs> <laughs> if I... anyone is listening to this on radio, <laughs> this woman looks so young, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh boy, I was maybe 16 at the time. Okay. But, yeah. And so I you're watching your dad as he's going through this. And, yeah. And like... What are you in love with during that time? Like, what is your passion during that time? What was my passion? Uh, not boys. Uh, <laughs> no. Not boys. Actually, you know what? My dad embraced Sikhism. So really, we were going to the Gudwara. Oh, really? A lot. Right. Yeah. So he embraced, Sikh like he totally embraced yeah. Sikhism. He's like, if I'm going to do this, you guys are doing this yeah. too. So, yeah. So, you know, every Wednesday, Friday night, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. He's like, it these was our kids community center. The Gudwara was like our community center. That's well, yeah, where we if went. There's three families here, like that, what a beautiful way to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. So you, that was the, like, you did. fully embraced it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So now he's building all this out of his house. Yes. And you're the business out of his home. And your mom is supporting this, encouraging this, and she's seeing it in front of her eyes. You guys are all seeing this in front of your eyes. Yeah. So what, what happens? How does this thing grow? Well, um, mom didn't like all the boxes that were sitting in the hallway. <laughs> Purolator, UPS, FedEx, Loomis, you know, all these packages were showing up in the hallway. And she says, you know, you, you need to move out. Okay. Um, and so we, um, we moved out in the early, or the mid 80s, late 80s. We moved out of the house into our first uh, unit. And I was not with the company at the time. At all. I was just helping part time. I would go over um a couple of days a week to do invoicing for him his paperwork right because his you know he was going out on site and mm -hmm. doing what he needed to do um and, and you're still I, in high school at this point no i was married oh my gosh wow yeah. okay that's this is this story <laughs> it reminds me so much of um i can't tell you how many women that i have met over the past few years actually maybe i'd say just started five years ago where that's the story you got married really like my bua for example she got married when she was 16 years old yeah yeah, yeah. so i was 16. that's crazy yeah. so i was married and i had uh well by the time i started helping my father i had uh four children wow yeah, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh my God. I really want to know the rest of the story now. <laughs> okay. So now you're, you have four children. Yeah. And you're helping your dad out. Yeah. Invoicing. Yes. And you're taking care of four kids. Yes. Who are you? <laughs> you do what you got to do. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. Can we be best friends? <laughs> <laughs> sweet. Okay. So then, so now your, your dad's in the office space. He's building out the company. Does the company have a name? Astron, uh, yes, Astronic Industrial. Controls. Okay, so that's what it was from the very beginning. No, it was it was G and H mm. Industrial for a little bit, and then he incorporated the company and became Astronic Industrial Controls. As an entrepreneur, as well, I get more motivated and more inspired every single time I leave these interviews. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So when we were at break, I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I I want to get into the story of your dad and how he built. Um, GH at the time. Um, but one thing that you, you know, you just finished saying you're 16, four kids, what's going through your mind at this point? Like, like what is going through your head at that point? You're just like, what do you want to do to your career ambitions? Like, you know, where do you want to head school, all that kind of stuff? Okay. So one quick, uh, correction, mm -hmm, okay. four kids at 29. Okay. I married at 16. Married, married at 16. Kids. Okay. I had my first one at 20. First one in 20. Right. Okay. Um, so, but when I started with dad, I had the four kids. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, but even at 16, yeah. married. Yeah. So at 16, um, yeah, I, you know, um, I wasn't thinking that I was going to be in 
where I am today, mm -hmm. um, involved in the industry that I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. Interior design was where I wanted to go. I mean, I'm very, I'm very creative. Um, anyone want to come and decorate to, my house? <laughs> <laughs> anyone that you talk to that knows that knows me will say Gummel or Kim should be doing interior design or party planning. Really? So yeah, I'm really. That's kind of like my. That's where I thought I would be. Okay. But you know, life uh, had another had another path for me. It's funny because when ever you look back or ever, even when I look back on things that I really, really, really wanted to go a certain way and they didn't. Mm -hmm. Now looking back, are you glad that they didn't go that way? Mm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as much as I've, um, it's been extremely challenging and I'm very passionate about what I do, but I'm in a family business. Right. And it gets hard sometimes. It gets hard sometimes. And, As um, anyone who's in a family business will tell you. Yeah. You need thick skin to run that. Absolutely. Yeah. You need very thick skin. Yeah. But you know what? Um, when I look back at all that um, that's happened with the company and how the company's grown and, and the reputation of the company in the industry, it, it, it does make me happy mm -hmm. to feel that we've, you know, that Acetronic has accomplished so much and has come to where it has um, with such a simple beginning. You know, my dad just wanted to have a business that would supply food and a home for his family. Wow. <laughs> it's it's all good. This is, you're going to get so many other people emotional. <laughs> this, this is happiness for you. You're looking back on this and you're thinking, oh my God. Mm -hmm. how much has happened mm -hmm. in such a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. um, so now your your dad has built this company yeah, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She's actually crying, everyone, for those who are listening. This, but it's, it's a lot of entrepreneurs um, that work really hard. Sometimes they, they, ha they get in this habit of um, – looking so far forward all the time, step after step after step after step, future, 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 future. It's like we don't give ourselves enough credit for um, for what we've accomplished. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kudos to you Sorry. for Sorry. how much you've accomplished. <laughs> never, never, ever, ever <laughs> apologize for happy tears, ever. So now you're 29 when you joined your dad's company um, officially? Yeah, 28, 29. Okay, twenty eight, twenty nine. So at um, twenty eight, twenty nine, when you joined, were like, what was your position? Uh, I was still doing admin, so the invoicing, uh, just paperwork. Okay, much, yeah. and like, where was the company at at that point? Like, how many customers? What was the revenue? Like, where where was the company at at that point? Uh, humongous? No, no, no. We weren't humongous. Um, we were under a million dollars. Okay. Sales, right? And um, I think at the time there was maybe five or six of us with the company at the time. Mm -hmm. Five or six, that's it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how, how big was the space? Um, the very first place we moved in was about 1,200 square feet, I believe. Holy the cow. Yeah. And right now the place that you guys are in is 9,000 square yeah, feet? Yeah, we're just over 9,000 now. That's insane. Yeah. So, uh, no, so now you're, you're here. Um, is your dad still around? Uh, involved with the business? Yeah. No, he's not involved with the business. Okay. At, from 29 to what age did you buy your dad out? And what led to that decision? Why did you do that? Um, I think 2008 was when I actually purchased the company. And it was just, um, you know, my dad wanted to to retire. Mm -hmm. um, he'd had some, some medical issues. And, mm -hmm. You know, he. My dad's a very simple man. Mm -hmm. Simple, simple needs. Um, so he just wanted to be able to, you know, do his part mm -hmm. and, and have a very peaceful life. Mm. So, you know, the circumstances just presented themselves where um, the opportunity was there, and mm -hmm. so we had a, a discussion. And and you you that's bought basically how it happened. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And what was your position at that point? Uh, at that point, I was pretty much running the company. At that, wow! At that time, in two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, I was pretty much running the company. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now you've bought him out, and I re so back to the story that we were both telling when you were giving me a tour. Is you had bought him out in June, and the recession hit in November. I love this story. 
Yeah. I want to know the July of 2008. I want to know the entire story. <laughs> Tell me exactly what happened, the emotions, the feeling, the holy shit moment, the can I do this moment, all of it. Yeah, it was um it was um so when we bought the company, it was, you know, you've bought a new company. It's it's this amazing new adventure that lies ahead of you, even though I had been with the company for a number of years up to that point. Um, did you have like a what the hell did I do moment? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Both my husband and I, because we were both in it together. And, right. Uh, it was like, if we fail, we're both here. Mm -hmm. like, you know, we don't have a backup here. Mm -hmm. So there was that period where, you know, maybe you should have another job and I'll just run the company. Mm. But, uh, my husband's my rock, uh, and he knew that well before I did. So he said, no, I'm going to be there right beside you. Aww. We're in this together, and, you know, we're going to make it work. Wow. So, And um, is your what's your husband's background in terms of, like, education in, relating to this, this uh, field? None of us have background in this industry, okay. in this field. So wow. I, I honestly have a, a high school education. Okay. I didn't go to post, post-secondary right. or university, right. nor did he. And so you're... You both had to learn from the ground up. Learn from the, learn from the ground up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, we took over in July and, um, you know, we were just starting to get settled. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, literally it was like um, a light switch was flicked mm -hmm. and the business went to virtually nothing. So we were nine employees when we purchased the company and we went down to four. We had to go down to four. And then we, our lease uh, came up around the same time. Um, so it was, it was great. Um, we, we downsized. We went from uh, about, uh, I think it was just over 10,000 square feet. We moved into 2,400 square feet and four employees, of which were myself, my husband, my electrician, and my technician. That's it. That's it. So we were pretty much, I mean, I was doing invoicing, um, all the data entry, all the accounting, sales, visiting customers. How many clients do you have at this point? Oh, we have uh, 800, 800. We have quite a, a substantial number of clients at the time, but we had to manage it amongst On ourselves. Yeah. So it was very difficult. Um, had to inject money. Um, and it was like, why did we buy the company? Why did we do this? Why did we do this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so you went through that. But, you know, you've got to get over it and, and get on with business. So back to the entrepreneurial advice that uh, you were giving to entrepreneurs that are ready to quit. Um, and you said, you know, you wouldn't have gone into it if you didn't want to. Expand on that. Your feelings of, you know, when you went through it, it's like that saying, seeing is believing. Did you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, I did. I mean, I'd been with the company for a number of years then, and I knew what we were what we were doing for our customers. And at the end of the day, Astronic is about making the customers happy. Like, what can we do to ease your pain? Mm -hmm. And as a person, mm -hmm. I love helping people. Mm. So the I can fact tell. that through Astronic, we were able to help our customers and provide solutions, that to me was extremely gratifying. Mm -hmm. So... That's what drove me. Mm -hmm. So I saw Astronic's place in the industry and what we represented and what we were able to offer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, times were bad and, yeah, it sucked and, you know, recession was here and we were down. But you know what? We would get over it because all things shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. So it's everything's temporary and everything's cyclical. So you've just got to and and actually when you go through those periods of pain you become stronger yeah so you really need to when you're going through those difficult times and those down times and times that you question why you're doing what you're doing mm -hmm. just think back to why you decided to make that decision in the first place mm -hmm. right and yeah i think that's really important do you have a favorite book that you've ever read that like you would suggest it to anyone or a favorite quote or a favorite movie <laughs> it could be anything yeah um or a story maybe someone told you or maybe yeah. another entrepreneur told you something and that kind of kept you going you know i've i've got a quote on the bottom of my emails and it's all about how um, oh i saw that one yeah and it's escaping me right now maybe yeah it's camera, <laughs> camera so it, it was for me. the the love of something 
We'll get it. We'll yeah, we'll get it. Come to me. <laughs> we'll get it right after this break. We'll recite it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of your favorite quotes. That's one of my favorite quotes, and that's what I live by. You know. Every yeah. It's so it's so important to have those glimmers that that keep us going. So now you you've gotten over the recession now. Is this recession's done? You guys came out alive. You're you're good. Right. And do things start getting going even more now? Yeah, I mean, well, that's was a, this was a recession of 2008, right? So Oh, that was the um, recession that felt like it was never going to end. Yeah, it yeah. did. Uh, it was yeah. a bad it was a bad one. So, um but we came out stronger after that one, you know. Um we increased our production capacity. We automated where we weren't automated before. Mm-hmm. Um, so we invested in machinery which we never had before, mm-hmm. which allowed us to increase our efficiencies. Mm-hmm. Um we we created um, key partnerships with um, with key players within our industry, so um, you know it caused us to be lean and it caused us to to think outside of the box. Think outside the box, absolutely. You know. So just so everyone knows, because um, you know I did a deep dive into the manufacturing world, just so everyone knows what it is that you guys manufacture. Can you give a backstory to that? Hmm. Okay, so let's, I guess I start from a finished product. So virtually anything that's made out of plastic. So mm-hmm. whether it's a bottle cap, um, a water bottle, uh, a patio chair, um, siding on your shed, um, your bumper on your car, your dashboard, your glove compartment, your your fuel tank in your car, anything that's made out of plastic is what our customers produce. Wow. And then Astronic supplies those manufacturers with auxiliary equipment and, and, and key products that are used to ensure that that p- plastic piece is molded in the correct way, mm-hmm. right? So temperature is critical. So our the products that we manufacture uh, maintain and control the temperature of the plastic as it, it forms a part. What's the most bizarre thing you've ever created? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the bizarre thing we've created? I would say um, I didn't realize that our customer, well, it's our customers actually that created this part. Okay. Um, the flooring for a pig pen. I didn't know that oh, such yeah, a thing existed. That's right. You were telling me. Yeah. Oh. So these are these are tiles that um, actually go in, in, in. A pig pen. In a pig pen. So that to me was bizarre. And uh, one other thing comes to mind very quickly is uh-huh. um, uh, one of my customers tried to, well, they did make shingles out of recycled well, they took diapers. What? Soiled diapers. You're kidding. Yeah. And made shingles out of them. Roof shingles. With plastic? Well, recycled diapers. Soiled diapers. Oh, my goodness. How do you even do that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's a really stinky place. But <laughs> I'm like, what if it starts raining? <laughs> well, no. They, uh, no, no, no. So they, they were adding other other products to that um, oh my gosh! To that material to produce an end product, but they were using one of the key components to that mix was With soil, soil diapers. diapers. That's crazy. Yeah. So that was yeah the pig pens and then the uh, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Have you ever made yourself anything out of here? Oh, have we ever made ourselves out of anything out of here? Um, no. I yes, actually, we've done for shows. Okay, we've created um, right. When we do our trade shows, we've come, right. we've um, designed um, um, fixtures to put in our in our booth for our show. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so you've you've been married how long? Thirty eight years. Wow. Yeah. And your husband just joined the company. You you were saying just recently? Uh, no, no, no. About fifteen years. He's Fif- about okay, fifteen, 15 years. years. Yeah. Yeah. How is it coming to work? With your spouse every day, and then also seeing them at home, because you know most entrepreneurs are like, I don't know if I could do that day in day out. Yeah, you know it's funny you ask that because I've been asked that a lot of times, and my husband even gets asked, gets that asked that same mm-hmm. question. You know, how do you work with your spouse? Um, we respect, and I think we trust the decisions that each one of us makes, mm-hmm. and and we don't question them because we trust it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, he trusts me to, you know, to develop the sales for the company and grow the company, whether it's through sales, whether it's through marketing. Um, and I, and I, pretty much, I have blind faith in him, complete faith in him mm-hmm. to to run the the production, which is so, so important. What I need, yeah. So I think we have a, a really um, awesome 
um, amount of respect for one another and the trust. And and we don't have any issues. I mean, um, you know, we'll have stuff that happens at work, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. You know, so you'll have your disagreements, your arguments, and yeah. your, you know, things that you don't agree on. But yeah. when we go home, it we leave work. Well, we try to leave work. You separate work. it. We try to. We right. try to. There are times where it does go home. And it's like, okay, no, we need to discuss this at work. Mm-hmm. We're home now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. That's very important. Yeah. How, what advice would you give to those that are, um, they are an entrepreneur and they're married to an entrepreneur? How do you keep that marriage strong? I think the same thing. You know, respecting and trusting that your partner has chosen something that they're extremely passionate about Mm -hmm. and that your support is important because at the end of the day, you're life partners, right? You've chosen to be with one another for whatever those reasons may be. Um, But innately, innately you're you're trusting that partner. Yes. Right? So I think um, allowing them to realize those dreams or those passions and those, those... Mm-hmm. Hobbies, anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then just supporting Vision, them. yeah. Vision, yeah. And then, yeah, just respecting and trusting them that they are doing. And you know what? I believe that if you are passionate um, about anything, you will succeed. You will succeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The thing with Kim that everyone needs to realize on this interview is she's in a very is it safe to say male dominated industry? Absolutely. And she has come on top, on top as one of the very 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 few females in this industry that is running a business like this, a multi-million dollar business like this. Um and especially being South Asian, that is so commendable. Um I think for any woman that is out there watching this interview, um it's a it's a very 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 inspiring takeaway. Uh, And the fact that you are, you know, you've been married 38 years, you have four kids. I wanted to get back on that and I wanted to touch base on, you know, how did you grow this company with, you know, four kids, rearing four kids and, you know, making sure that they grow up to be good human beings and the, you know, education part and all this stuff. How did you do it? And your relationship at the same time. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't do it alone. Um, I couldn't have done it without my husband. I mean, he's integral to to what I've been able to accomplish um, as a wife, as a mother, uh, as a as an entrepreneur. Um, I'm only as good as as the support around me. Mm-hmm. So he's been integral to that. Um, I think that you know I had to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so. It was important for him to be a, a good father figure for the kids, which he was. So he supported me when I wasn't around. But um, I, I made it a point to to really have a, a work life balance. So I, I only worked five days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I left at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. We didn't work weekends. Wow! And all my kids did um, extracurricular activities, mm-hmm. so soccer, baseball hockey Mm -hmm. um and we did that so they were all over the place you know sometimes my husband would be in kitchener and i'd be in london or or scarborough or um london so but it's like you said you guys supported each other incredibly well absolutely Mm -hmm. so i think that was really important but um you know the kids the kids have um i'm very blessed to have very very understanding children Mm -hmm. i met two of them they're (laughs) incredible yeah, just, two of which are working with me now. Yeah, yeah. their their energy, just their you know, yeah. you can see the gratitude in them. You can see the fact that they're um, they're very happy. They're very content. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, we're very we're very very blessed. But um, lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you would be traveling, and your husband would be in Waterloo, or you'd be in Kitchener, yeah. and and your yeah. kids grew up so but, and we involved the kids in the business so when we had industry events that were that were locally so here in Mississauga or Montreal the kids would would come and participate in the trade shows um you know in the summers they would be working in the back with manufacturing doing some you know the jobs you got them involved to do mm-hmm. you know or, or doing filing in the office so mm-hmm. they were always there was a little bit of I guess their partnership or their share in the company. Right. So we always knew that Astronic was, you know, was a big part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Right. So I did involve them. And um, I think that went a long way in showing them 
how important the company was for us as a family as well. But that it didn't encroach on our family life as well. Mm -hmm. That was really important to me. There's, uh, when I walked into Ace Tronic, uh, one of the first people that I met was your daughter. And um, and then, then I met you and you said, uh, this is a piece of paper that my other daughter, who had just walked out the building, um, she left and she uh, said, these are all the things, mom, please don't forget about all these things that you've done and you've built over time. And literally this piece of paper is front and back. And I said to Kim, are you ready to talk about this? And she said, oh my God, I'm not ready. This is a lot of stuff that you've done under your belt. And the reason I'm bringing this up is the fact that your daughter wrote this down means <laughs> that you inspired her that much. That she remembers all of this yeah, she about you. Yeah, it better than I do. Yeah. Because I was struggling to remember. Yeah. yeah. That's how much she's watching yeah, you. Yeah, that's how much she's watching me. Right? It's incredible. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation recently with, um, you know, with, with some friends. I, I, I should say some friends over time over a period of like the last, you know, three, four years. Um, and they got married really early. And somewhere along the way, they lost themselves and they're starting, they're trying to find themselves again. Mm. And I've noticed in our conversations, for the most part, it's, it all goes to that communication that you have with your partner and how supportive your partner is. And, you know, that journey you're building with each other and that trust you have with each other. Because regardless of the age you get married, and you correct me if I'm wrong, regardless of the age that you get married at, if you don't have any of those components there, of course, you're going to get lost. And if you don't have the freedom to be who you are and the freedom of speech and the freedom to travel or the freedom, and I'm talking about the South Asian culture in specifics, yeah, yeah. of course you're going to lose yourself. So the question that I was asking was, you know, what advice would you give to South Asian women that are really battling um, finding themselves again? I'm going to assume that you're in a relationship because you've chosen to be in that relationship, mm -hmm. right? So there was a reason that you chose to be in that relationship with that person that you that you love. Um, so, you know, th there's no rosy path for anybody. Um, there's going to be a lot of things that come along the way that are going to throw you for a loop. Um, but I think you, you've got to have that resolve where you've got to communicate with your partner and and be able to work through those difficult times and and develop that that trust and um, awareness and awareness that you're true to one another and that's yes. and that's at the core of everything that you do mm -hmm. um that's at the core of everything and then whether you want to choose to whatever you want to choose to do in life should be on another level. Mm -hmm. But what's at the core is what you mean to each other and the trust and the respect that you have for one another. Yes. So your partner should respect, like I said earlier, respect and trust the decisions that you're making as your as your partner, that they're doing it for the benefit of your relationship or, yes. for, them, or of the, for themselves even. Because once know? the trust is gone, once the support is gone, once the understanding is gone, the communication is gone, then what are you necessarily building upon? Yeah, it's yeah. very difficult. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll be very honest and say that, you know, um, you know, my husband and I went through a period where it, it was very difficult. A we lot through, of relationships go yeah, through Yeah, we went through a, very, uh, a time where he, he couldn't understand the need for the travel, the need for, you know, why... I went through this. Even why do you need to grow the business? Mm -hmm. It's good the way it is. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to grow it? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll just keep it the way it yeah. is and... We don't need to grow. We don't yeah. need to hire more people. We don't need to automate. We don't need, you know, so, mm -hmm. but I was, I was steadfast in my resolve and my belief and my, 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 my goal that this is what we can do as a company. And this is what I need to do and you to need. achieve that goal. And, and so I, I, I remained steadfast on that. And while he did not agree with that, mm -hmm. right. So, so I think that, but so we went through that difficult time and we communicated along the way and uh there were some really tough times along along that journey you got through it mm -hmm. we need to touch upon this um because as entrepreneurs who happen to be south asian um 
you know, you've you've built a huge company in a male dominated space. And we were just talking about, you know, being that person also in a relationship um, and having that communication with your spouse, um, building that, you know, that business and having that support at the same time and without losing yourself and just, you know, staying true to who you are and not budging from that. Um, what other advice would you give to these women that are, that are struggling to find their voice out there? They're, you know, oh my God, what my, what is my mother-in-law going to say? Or what are my in-laws going to say? What are my parents going to say? What are friends going to say? Like if I'm, like we were just talking, if, you know, someone's traveling, oh, who's staying at home with the kids? Well, I'm sorry. There's something called a husband. He also gave life to these kids. Did she go alone? Yeah. Who went, <laughs> went with her? Where she's saying, oh my God, hi, hi. She's staying in a hotel. How did she get there? How did she get there? It's like the most stupidest, stupidest questions. But it's funny because we all go through it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, how do we cut this stigma? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if we can cut it right now. I think it's, it's, it's going to come with time. Mm -hmm. Communication. Uh, yeah, communication. And, you know, I got it from my mother. I had it from my in-laws. I was getting it directly from my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I was getting it indirectly through my in-laws, mm -hmm. through my, via my husband. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was getting a lot of, a lot of pushback from my husband to, for growing the business and what I needed to do to grow the business. But I, but I knew what I needed to do. Yeah. And I knew that I Staying was, true to yourself. Yeah, I was staying true to myself. And I knew that there was no, no ulterior motive. Like mm -hmm. I was growing the business and that was it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whatever, I'm going to call it insecurity be, or insecurity mm -hmm. or, or, you know, what are people going to say? Mm -hmm. um, wherever that, whatever place that was coming from. It's a cultural stigma. It's a cultural stigma, but. I couldn't deal with that because I had a job to do. I had a business to run. I had a business to grow. Mm -hmm. And I knew what that was. And I and I, I felt, well, I knew what I needed to do. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think my husband and I went, uh, we, back had, and you forth. know, we had a, we had a back and forth over, I'm going to say three, four years. And it was, it was not a, it was not a rosy, it was not a rosy time for us. Mm -hmm. And, but our, but you know what, in the end, um, our kids witnessed us going through that. Mm -hmm. And it could have been very easy to say, you know what, I'm done. Yeah, which we you were just talking what? about. That's this always the easy way. This is what I'm going to do. This yeah. is what I'm going to do. If you're not agreeing with it, you go your way, I'll go my mm -hmm. way. And we did have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we loved each other very much. Yeah. So... You know, it was easy to say, but our hearts wanted something else. So we worked through it. You know, we communicated and it was hard. Mm -hmm. it, it got ugly. Mm -hmm. um, it was a hard thing to do. Um, I think it would have been easier to say, okay, you know what? You go your way. I'll go my way. Mm -hmm. um, the harder thing was to persevere and, 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 and see it through. Yes. You know, and I'm so I'm, glad we did. And our, but our kids saw that. And I think that showed them. Work through it. Work through it. You know, I think a lot of parents, we hide things from our children. And we, yes. don't, want them to, we don't want them to see or be witness to, Everything's to, okay. the ugly, to the ugly stuff. And, you know, what happens between a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. um, but they saw it firsthand. And we actually involved them in some of our conversations. That's brilliant. Uh, at the time, I didn't think it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> But now looking back. But it back, came to a point where we needed to involve them. Yeah. Um, but they witnessed, uh, the, the, you know, how we how we moved through that difficult phase of you, our marriage, our relationship. You're teaching them strong communication yeah. skills so, as a couple. Yeah. So in growing the company, we helped to to nurture to nurture that in the kids and, and show them that marriage takes work. Yes. It doesn't just work on its own. You've got to work at it. People want to... that va va voom from the yeah, very beginning no. to last and last and last, yeah. but no. Hey, it lasts, but yeah. you've got to you've got to work at it as well, right? So I'm taking advice from you. <laughs> you you've been doing this 38 years. I'm going to go home and be like, we got to keep doing this. Yeah, no. Got to keep on this track. Um, thank you for sharing that. I because I think that's going to resonate with a lot of 
um, women out there, whether they're entrepreneurs or not, you know, to to really work on that communication. Because I think a lot of people um, are afraid to reveal themselves. Um, a lot. It's difficult. It's difficult, absolutely. And I think you touched upon it so many times is communicate. Communicate and just know that you guys can trust one another um, and have that support, which is, and you can come out stronger. I absolutely do believe that. So you you have two daughters and a son. Three daughters. Three daughters and and, a son. and uh, two of your kids are involved here. Right. And then the two. Sorry. What, what's the age? Uh, thirty four, thirty five. I think she's now. Okay. Um, thirty. Okay. And twenty seven and twenty soon to be twenty five. Wow. And so the the two younger ones are with you here. Two older ones. Are the two older ones are here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah incredible mm -hmm. um and where do you like when are you going to retire and what are you going to do are they going to take over <laughs> retire and do what <laughs> i heard retirement is actually the worst thing for your brain uh, yeah, no, yeah you know what i love i love what i do if anything i would like to be able to be more selective with when i work and when i don't work so i love i love interacting with my customers i love the business development side of the business mm -hmm. so you know, I think retirement to me means that I work when I want to work. Yes. And I do what I love to do. And you're is, already doing that. Which is being in front of my customers. So, no, I'd, I love to garden. So I'd love more time to garden. Wow. Okay. Right? So, you know, I think I'd like to stay home on Mondays. Right. 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 And, and spend time in my garden and then, you know, go and spend three days developing business or do you just any, do prospecting. Do you have any grandkids yet? No. No. But I have one coming next year. <gasps> Oh, you're going to be busy, <laughs> busy woman. Yes, oh, yes, my God. Yeah. Don't even get me started on my yeah, mom. Yeah. My mom forgot she had three other kids. She's <laughs> like, I had three other kids. It's so funny because when you see your parents interact with their grandkids, you're like, why? Like, what happened with me growing up? And why were you not this, the same person? Yeah, it's, I, think, I think it's a chance for us to fix what we didn't do the first time around. Yeah, it's that's true. That's very true. So you're so no retirement on the horizon. Um, how many? There's like a few different boards that you are a part of here. Mm -hmm. um, of all of these boards that you're a part of, is there a board? If there was a board that you could create, what would that look like in today's day and age? I guess a board for for women entrepreneurs, South Asian entrepreneurs. You know the the young girls mm -hmm. that are out there that are maybe kind of wondering if they could do this. Is it possible? Am I able? You know, could I? Mm -hmm. Should I? Would I? You know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that would be something that would be extremely. And what in, yeah, what industries do you want to see more women a part of? South Asian women apart. Manufacturing of. for me. You because do. Because I'm in that space. Right. And and we're not there. Um, I think I'm 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 only aware of myself as a South you're, Asian. You're woman definitely in our an anomaly, yes. Yeah. Yes. So never mind being a woman, a South Asian woman. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see more more of us out there. Mm -hmm. And it's doable. If I could do it, anybody can do it. I heard that uh, in Canada, we were having this conversation, and correct me because I know I'm going to butcher this. Mm -hmm. um, the plastics manufacturing is two billion dollars. No, the mold making. The, the mold, mold making. making is worth two yeah. billion dollars of the Canadian economy. That is insane. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that anything that's made out of plastic is um, is um, requires a mold anything okay right because you need to form that plastic so a mold is integral to making plastic parts right you can't make a part without a mold like anything nothing literally anything like no the thing over there yeah so so canada is home to five of the top mold makers globally wow so yeah we've got a we've got a we've got the kick-ass mold makers of the world here that's, right in Ontario, actually. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. The the other woman that you were talking about that's also in this industry, um, she's here in Canada as well, correct? Mm -hmm. The the woman uh, that's also CEO of the plastics manufacturing company, the picture that we saw. 
Back over there? Yep. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> she was a Caucasian woman. The Caucasian woman. The, and your logo was right next to her? Oh, sorry. Linda... Hassafras from Lindemar. Sorry. Yes, yes, Lindemar. yes, Lindemar. Okay, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So yes. it's just you two that are up there right now. Well, so no, we were attending an event in um, in the southern states, an automotive event, and we were both there. Mm-hmm. So um, we were featured on the same panel, the same piece of um, paper. Paper. Wow. <laughs> so that was a big thing for me. That's incredible. Yeah. That's yeah. so incredible. Yeah. They're a multi-billion-dollar company, and mm-hmm. we're, you know. A multi-million dollar company, so we're quite a bit smaller than her. Are you going to get to a multi-billion? I'll leave that for my kids to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, watch the grandkid come in. You're like, Astronic what? what? What do you mean? So what is next for you? Oh, boy. What is next? Like, so you've told me your hobbies, interior design, and you love gardening. And, you know, and at some point, you're going to have to say this company is doing fantastically well I also want to pursue this other stuff and see if I can kind of bring it in or I don't know whatever it is look at me giving you ideas I know I know I know and honestly I have to be very right now um and even and even looking forward this has been such a big part of my life um and it's become a passion for me um and I just see that there is so much more that we can do as as a company to benefit the industry. So, you know, um, I think that um, there, you know, there's still a lot that we can do and develop and bring um, and help to bring value for our industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm a big proponent about manufacturing for any country. Without manufacturing, what are people going to do? Mm. Um, so manufacturing is key to a, a country's economic growth. Right. So we need to nurture the manufacturing and we need to ensure that it, it you know, that it continues on. Um, so I'm involved with, an association that I'm involved with is um, the Canadian Association of Mold Makers. Mm-hmm. And we're working um, on developing a program for skilled trades. Um, you know, the, the education system does not really um it's not helping to nurture and develop skill trades right now it's Got all it. into tech so for anyone who's out there listening skill trades mm-hmm. there is huge money to be made right now. let's develop this program yeah so we are work we're working as an association we're working to develop a program right okay now, um because we have to do this in order to uh, ensure that we continue to manufacture here in canada absolutely i mean you look at england england has no more manufacturing really and they were the manufacturing hub of the world, you know, foundries, you know, steel clothing, textiles. It was huge industry for England. They're they're There's, they have nothing left. Financial, financial, and tech industry there right now. Wow. So manufacturing has virtually disappeared for England. So we have to be very careful to not let because once you let manufacturing go, it's very hard to bring it back. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. Yeah. So it's it's really important. Well, however I can help, please let me know. I well, like I said, I I almost went into engineering. Like my dad was really heavily pull, pushing me into like electronics and engineer because he's an engineer, right. um, I, and, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just couldn't get past um, chemistry. <laughs> I just yeah, could not get past. It. Like, why do you need chemistry for <laughs> you know engineering or, or um, electronics? It was beyond me. Um, but that's good to know. That's really good to know. Yeah. I think, you know, you see a lot of creative stuff happening right now. But I think, you know, all these creatives that do exist out there, um, they should know that the, that there is a need and a niche for this. Um, where this There's not so much low-hanging fruit and competition. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so one of the questions I like to ask uh, before we leave the show um, is health. What do you do to unwind? What do you do um, when you feel overwhelmed? Um, you know, what are your eating habits? You know, that that sort of stuff. Gym, meditation. It's it's interesting that you've asked me that question. <laughs> it's almost like my daughter put you up to that. But uh, yeah, no. Because I swear we did not speak. I got speak. a lecture from my daughter about this. Um, so I do the gym religiously from January to May. Okay. 
April, May, mm-hmm. and then I get really busy at work, and then it kind of goes by the wayside. Right. And um, I've recently become a vegetarian. It's been almost, I think, Good I'm for my you. fifth month now. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, much better. You know, I was having um, some issues, which I'm not having anymore. My son had actually indi- said, Mom, you know, why don't you try eating less meat in your diet? So I stopped eating meat um, and drinking um, more water. Good for so you. So um, I've actually had, um, I've noticed a big difference in my in my whole well-being. Have you watched the documentary Game Changers on Netflix? Yeah, I've watched it partially. You, yeah, yeah watched the yeah, entire thing. It's yeah, one of very the... Very interesting. It's one of the enlightening. documentaries, yes, that doesn't talk about the animal killing and all that. It just, it talks about the, like, the science behind. Behind it. Yeah, yeah. which I really appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, the meditating... Um, my husband meditates. Okay. And he's been, uh, you know, he's indicated or mentioned a couple of times that I should start. Okay. Um, I'm all about the company and, and trying to, you know, do what I need to do for the company. So less time for myself, but I'm trying to... You're getting into it. I'm getting into it now. So if your daughter is listening out there, you <laughs> just heard it from your mom's mouth. She's going to try. Yes. That's incredible. And do you do a lot of reading? And not as much as I would love to. I was such a big reader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's gone by the wayside. And it's um, it's something that I really want to get back into. So mm-hmm. absolutely. And final, final, final question. Do you believe that you are the sum of the five people you hang out with? Yeah. I, yeah. That is very important. Your company. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um you know, being able to share what you're going through, uh, the experiences and the and the trials and the tribulations, and and having a circle around you that's able to to understand and and to give advice, or even that are going through those types of experiences, mm-hmm. a long hand, way goes hand in hand with with how you deal with it. So absolutely. All right, I just got a I got a wave from our <laughs> videographer saying we got to cut this down. Thank you so much for for being on the show. It really means a lot to me. I mean, finding South Asian entrepreneurs um, that are unicorns uh, is already hard as it is, but um, I, I can't say enough. Thank you very much. No, thank you so very much for for having. Me. No, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the wine. Um, super quick. If uh, people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, my email. Okay. So Kim. K Tierra at astronic.com. All right. K T H I A R A at astronic.com. Perfect. We'll stick that up on the video as well. Thank you so much for all of you that were listening. Of course, you can find me at Sonia underscore Gill on Instagram, or you can find me through my website, website, www.soniagill.com. Uh, thanks for being in touch.